Hi, my name is Mike with Side Effects, and today we'll be going over the switch node. So let's drop down a geometry object and give ourselves a switch. Now right off the bat, it's going to throw an error at us, and that's because the switch needs at least one input before it's happy. So we can drop down a sphere and plug it in. All right, there we go. Now we've got our sphere in the viewport. Now this node might fly under the radar for a lot of people, especially as they're just getting started learning Houdini. But trust me when I say that it's very hard to overstate the importance of the switch, especially once you begin building HDAs. So what the switch actually does is it can take any number of inputs and allows you to control the output based on the select input parameter right here. So to give an example of this, we can drop down a box and a tube and plug both of these into the switch as well. Now, as we adjust this input value, you can see that the output of the switch changes accordingly. And so this allows you to plug in any number of inputs and switch between them using this value right here. It is important to note that you can visually tell exactly which input you're accessing by looking at the lines connecting the nodes. If an input is currently being accessed by the switch, it will show up as this solid line right here. But if an input isn't being accessed, it will show up as these dotted lines. So a quick and easy way to see exactly what you're getting out of your switch. And that's about it. The switch is a very straightforward node, but has some very useful applications. So let me give an example of some of those. Get rid of these two inputs. Instead, drop down a null. Whoop. And plug this into our switch. And with our mouse over our switch, we can actually just press Shift R to rearrange these inputs nice and easy. There we go. All right. So now let's say, just as an example, that you're working in a pyro simulation, and you want a small puff of flame on frame let's say 16. So in this example, we can just assume that our sphere in this case is going to be our fuel, and we only want it to exist on frame 16. Well, just like the rest of the parameters in Houdini, you're able to control the values of them, or of this one in particular, by writing different expressions. And so we can write an expression that will tell the switch to only access input one on frame 16. So to do that, we can simply double click into our parameter, type in dollar sign F to access the current frame, and then say equals 16. There we go. So now, whenever the frame number is equal to 16, our switch will access our sphere. So if you visualize the switch and we hit the play button, you can see that for a single frame, we get our sphere. So if we actually hang the frame number on frame 16, and we take a look at our switch, you can see that the value has evaluated to one. And for every other frame number, it's zero. So, a good thing to be aware of. And lastly, as I mentioned before, switches are also very useful whenever you begin to build your HDAs. And so let me give an example of when that would come in handy. First, we're going to come up here, right click, and delete our channels to reset this value. And next, we can drop down another null. There we go. Actually plug our switch into this. We can just call this out for now. And now what we can do is we can give this null a parameter and then link that parameter to the value of the switch, effectively allowing us to control the output of the switch from this null right here. So to do that, we're going to have our null selected, come up to this gear, edit the parameter interface, and come over here to these create parameter options. And all this window does is simply allow you to create any number of different parameters on the node you have selected. In our case, it's our out null. But for this specific example, we just want this custom toggle parameter down here. So to create a parameter on your node, you simply drag and drop from the create parameters window all the way over here to the root of the existing parameters. All right, there we go. So now we've got our toggle and we're actually just gonna label this something different. Let's say sphere generator. All right, there we go. So now as we hit accept, you can see that we have our currently totally useless sphere generator toggle on our null. And so what we can do is we can right click our parameter, go down to the copy parameter option, then come back up to our switch right click again in the select input parameter and go down to paste relative references. Now you see an expression has been generated for you and this is effectively linking up the value of this parameter to this parameter. And so you can see that if we turn on our sphere generator, we now get our sphere in the viewport. And as we turn it off, it disappears. This has been the switch node. Thank you for watching.